the caravan. An intending disciple said to Danun the Egyptian, Above everything in this world I wish to enroll in the path of truth. Danun told him, You can accompany our caravan only if you can first accept two things. One is that you will have to do things which you do not want to do. The other is that you will not be permitted to do things which you desire to do. It is wanting which stands between man and the path of truth. Giant Apples A Sufi once visited a king to advise him on matters of state, and the two became good friends. After some months, the Sufi said, I must now move on to work in private among the lowest people in your kingdom, in poverty and many miles from here. The king urged him to stay, but the Sufi assured him that he must do his duty. How shall I remain in contact with you? asked the king. The Sufi gave him a letter and said, If ever you receive incredible news about fruit from such and such a province, open this. Then my work will have been finished, and you will still have something to do. The Sufi journeyed to his destination and lived like any ordinary individual there, carrying on his functions in accordance with the dervish science. Some years later, a certain man, thinking that the Sufi might have a hoard of money, killed him, but all he found was a packet marked Giant Apple Seeds. He planted the seeds, and within an amazingly short time, apple trees bearing fruit as big as a man's head filled his garden. People began to revere the murderer as a man of sanctity, for who else could stock his orchard in a matter of days, in midwinter, with trees bearing fruit of such a size? The murderer, however, was not content with this adulation. If I got no money from the man I killed, he reflected, here is my chance now. I shall take them to the king and he will certainly reward me. After many difficulties, he was shown into the presence of the monarch. The murderer said, Your Majesty, I have in a basket here an apple the size of a man's head, which I have grown in a few days in midwinter in such and such a province. At first the king was amazed at the sight of the fruit. Then he remembered the Sufi's letter. He called for it to be brought from the treasury where it had been kept, and opened it. The letter said, the man who grows giant apples is my murderer, no matter what respect he has earned from it. Let justice now be done. Effort Asked about effort and prosperity, Zayn al abidin said, The rich take refuge in prosperity and make it their idol. The poor take refuge in poverty and make it their shackles. Only the wise ones know the real meaning and value of objects and efforts, and the circumstances and reason for opulence and show, or the reverse. The New Initiate Ashraf Ali Naizi was approached by a foreign visitor who said, I wish to become a Sufi and will do anything if I can be initiated. I have read such and such books and met some Sufis in our own country. This callow individual will assuredly have to remain here for years if he is to learn even how to approach the way, unless Hadrad Niazi casts him out immediately, the disciples thought. But the sheikh at once said to the visitor, I shall initiate you at once. More, I shall make you my representative in your own country. Work on your own. I do not know the people whom you have mentioned. The disciples were almost all amazed. When the visitor left, the sheikh said, You have all imagined that I would cast him out or else give him tasks which would prepare him for enlightenment. You now imagine that I have done neither, but honoured him unnecessarily. But it is the reality, not the appearance, which functions. 
I have sent him away, that is, a casting out. I have told him that he is initiated and our representative. That is his exercise in preparing. If he imagines now that he should teach or enroll and act as a representative, he will increase his own self-esteem and get nowhere. If he realizes that he is unsuitable for initiation and to be a representative, he will return, and I will then be able to instruct him. But what about the people whom he might imagine that he is teaching if he fails the test? Will he not harm them? asked a disciple. Anyone who takes him for a teacher, or even an initiated Sufi, said the master, is already beyond our reach. Unanswerable When Jalaluddin Rumi started to recite his couplets of wisdom, it is reported, people had not had enough time to form any opinion of him. Some were interested, some were not. Others, following an inevitable human pattern, resented him. They said, We hope that you do not think that you are a second Aesop or something. Literalism A would-be disciple presented himself to a Sufi in Baghdad, asking to be accepted for teaching. I will accept you as a probationer, said the Sufi, and give you these first directions, that you do not consider yourself to have any belongings, and that you do not hold on to anyone else's property. The disciple agreed. Now the Sufi said, You must travel from here to Bokhara, living as best you can, and noting everything which happens. After that you should wait for further instructions from me. The disciple set off, and eventually reached Bokhara. He had only just arrived, however, when he felt a nip, and realised that he was host to a flea. This will never do, said the disciple to himself for I cannot remain in Bokhara as instructed when I have not fulfilled the whole of my first instructions. This flea, to be sure, I do not consider to be my own, but since it is assuredly someone else's property, I shall retrace my steps until I find its owner. Nobody would accept the flea until he arrived back in Baghdad, where it jumped off him, and he never saw it again. Hilmi. They asked Hilmi, Why do you take so much interest in matters which are not connected with the progress of man? He said, When you want to know how hard the coppersmith has been working, you look at the shavings on his floor. The High Knowledge Anis was asked, What is Sufism? He said, Sufism is that which succeeds in bringing to man the high knowledge. But if I apply the traditional methods handed down by the masters, is that not Sufism? It is not Sufism if it does not perform its function for you. A cloak is no longer a cloak if it does not keep a man warm. So Sufism does change. People change and needs change. So what was Sufism once is Sufism no more. Sufism, continued Anis, is the external face of internal knowledge, known as high knowledge. The inner factor does not change. The whole work, therefore, is the high knowledge, plus capacity, which produces method. What you are pleased to call Sufism is merely the record of past method. Charikari Charikari said, It is related that a grasshopper brought a blade of grass as his offering to King Solomon the Wise, son of David, on whom be peace. When a donkey wants to praise something, he says, This is just like a thistle. When man wants to honour a wise man, 
he sets up a shrine for him and calls him a religious teacher. Hazrat Bahudin Shah Bahudin was a mighty prince, active in administering the affairs of state and unconcerned about things of the mind. One day he decided that something must be done about the large number of rogues and vagabonds who had flocked to live in the shelter of his prosperous domain. He instructed the guards that a month from that time all mendicants and wanderers were to be rounded up and brought into the courtyard of his castle for judgment. A certain Sufi who was a member of Bahudin's court asked for leave at that time and set off on a journey. When the appointed day arrived, the vagabonds were collected and made to sit down in a huge group to await Bahudin Shah. Seeing so many evident undesirables seated before his fortress, Bahudin Shah was extremely wroth. He harangued them at length, ending, The court decrees that you shall all be whipped as evildoers and as a discredit to our domain. Then, in the midst of the prisoners, the Sufi courtier, dressed in rags, stood up and said, O prince of the family of the prophet, if a member of your own court has been arrested because of his clothes, and has thereby been proved a rogue, we must take heed. If we are known to be undesirable only by our clothes, there is a danger that people might learn this custom and start to judge rulers like yourself only by their clothes, and not by their inner worth. What would then happen to the institution of just rulership? After this, Bahudin abandoned his throne. He is buried near Kabul in Afghanistan, where he is regarded as one of the greatest of all Sufi sheikhs. All dismount when passing his shrine, and the lesson has never been forgotten. Difficult. A band of robbers came upon a sincere man who was trying to study the way of the Sufis. Finding that he had no possessions of any consequence, they began to whisper about what to do with him. Suddenly he began to shout, No, no, please give me time. The leader of the bandits said, Do not be so afraid, it is over in a moment. Since you might identify us in future, we are going to kill you. Death is really nothing, we have seen it many times. Death, said the man, I am not worrying about that. You were whispering, and I thought you had decided to ask me to become really honest. That is what would have been difficult. This is the origin of the Sufi group called taifa i duzdan the Band of Thieves, who were so impressed by this experience that they joined their victims.